What's going on everyone? In today's video, we're going to be talking about overpass the hash. This attack aims to use the user's NTLM hash to request Kerberos tickets so that we can get a TGT as an alternative to the common pass the hash over NTLM protocol. Therefore, this can be especially useful in networks where NTLM protocol is disabled and only Kerberos is allowed as an authentication protocol. So all that we would need to do to actually pull this off is that ntlm hash from any type of user so again we use that ntlm hash and then we go to kerberos and ask for a tgt for that specific user that we got the ntlm hash for and then from there once the tgt is inside of our system we can then from there go ahead and try to authenticate two different services as that user so an attack scenario where you'd want to use this would be let's say you've got onto a system and you dumped the sam database and uh, you're, tr you're at the moment you're trying to crack hashes you tried uh, past the hash to see what machines you can get into didn't couldn't really get into many machines that way using ntlm or perhaps ntlm authentication is disabled entirely inside the environment um and so from here now you try and crack those ntlm hashes but you're having a bad time cracking them because perhaps the password is 30 characters long and it's, it's insane right so the third thing that you can do is still use that ntlm hash to now request kerberos tickets and once you request those kerberos tickets you'll get a tgt and then once you have that tgt you can go ahead and try to access services as that user also a quick side note um in case you're not able to get a uh an account's ntlm hash so let's say for example like a service account that was kerberosable right um, let's say you cracked the uh, hash, for example, and then you only have the clear text. What you can also do is, uh, let's say this is the clear text password, so let's just copy this. You can always just throw it into something like a NTLM password generator. Just paste the clear text in there. You press calculate, and then here we go. You now have an NTLM hash. So we would just throw this into crack station, crack hashes. We can see the, the type, NTLM, and we see the password. So for the demo, I'm actually going to do two demonstrations. So for the first demonstration, uh, I'm going to actually use the same user for both, by the way. So for the first demonstration, I'm actually going to use a tool called Rubius. So I'll be on a Windows system. And then for the second one, I'll do it straight from a Linux machine. So oh, here we are on our Windows AD join machine. Let's go ahead and sign in. So as we saw, we logged in as a user, Elliot Alderson or E. Alderson. Open up PowerShell. We could do uh, who am I? You can see we are uh, equal slash e Alderson. Net user slash domain. See what permissions they got. E Alderson. And we can see they're just part of the domain users group. So nothing really special there. Um, what we can also do is check for any cache tickets. Type K list. And we can see that they have. Let's open this up and we can see that they have a TGT here another one and uh, a TGS here to access a file service all right so let's actually try and connect to the C drive or the C share on the domain controller so let's do ls slash slash robot dash dc dot ecorp dot local slash C Okay, so let's hit enter, and we get a access denied, permission denied. So we can access the C drive on the domain controller. So now let's say that we somehow ended up getting the uh, NTLM hash of a service account that just happened to be a domain administrator. So here we have the hash. What I'm going to do now is delete all the tickets off of this machine. So if we can see them all here, we could just do KList purge. And now if we type tailist again, we see that we have zero cache tickets. So now we don't have any TGT stored in this machine, nor any TGS for this user E. Alderson. So now what we're going to do is use this tool called Rubius. And what Rubius is going to do is going to take that NTLM hash that we got from that SQL service, uh, service account user. And it's going to go ahead and ask Kerberos for that TGT. And then once we get that TGT, it's actually going to automatically get piped into our machine. And from there, we can go ahead and make requests as the SQL service user. So let's do that now. Let's do Rubius. Ask TGT. 
slash domain so ecorp dot local the user so we have the SQL service RC4 I'm gonna put in their NTLM hash so I'm just go to here copy this paste it in here and then slash PTT and it's finished so again what it did is use that NTLM hash went over to Kerberos it's like hey I want a ticket uh, TGT for the SQL service user as we put in the user here and then it gave us back a TGT for that specific user just using its NTLM hash so we can see here ticket successfully imported service name KRB TGT service realm equal local username SQL service start time end time renew time uh, renew till etc so now if we type in K list we should now see one cash ticket which is a TGT for the SQL service user and now if we go ahead and look at the permissions of the SQL service uh, service account user do net user domain SQL service we can see that they're part of the domain admins so now let's go ahead and try to view the C drive on the domain controller so robot dash DC equal dot local C and we were able to access it and now if we go back and use Klist again we should now see a TGS that was created from the TGT from the SQL service service account user uh, created for CIFS on the robot DC domain controller so that we can be able to actually view the shares so how this works is your machine will actually look inside of its cache tickets uh, let's say folder first before it actually goes ahead and requests another TGT so as we saw initially we tried to do this already with the e Audison user we had the e Audison's users TGT account that was cached and then once we tried accessing the share that's on the domain controller it went ahead and it got a TGS for CIFS to access the file share and then we got permission denied and then what we did was we wiped out our cache tickets entirely and then we went ahead and we got a new TGT for the SQL service user using the SQL service users NTLM hash and then again the computer looks inside of the cache tickets first before it goes and gets uh, a TGT so it's like okay cool I see that you have a TGT already inside your machine for the SQL service user so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that TGT to generate a TGS so that you can access these services and since the SQL service user is a domain admin since we have that TGT it's going to create that TGS which also gives us domain main admin privileges in order for us to access that C share on the domain controller and from here we can also gain access to the domain controller using something like uh, PS exec for example except EULA slash slash robot DC dot e corp dot local and then CMD now doing something like uh, IP config slash all we can see that we are now connected to the domain controller and it will view us as the SQL service user and this is only because we've used that service accounts TGT which we got from their NTLM hash and since we have the TGT inside of our machine it authenticated to the domain controller and so it authenticated us as SQL service instead of e alderson which is the user account that we are currently logged in as all right so here we are back on our kali linux machine so the first thing that we're going to try is connecting to the dc using ps exec as the sql service user account without entering any credentials at all to see what happens and what we get back and then what we'll do is use get tgt from in packet to grab the tgt for the sql service user account and then we're going to export that and then attempt connecting back using PS exec again for a second time. So again, just like Windows to see what type of tickets we have cached, we can type in KList and we see that we have no cache tickets at all. So now we're going to attempt to use PS exec to actually connect to the DC. So let's do PS exec dot PY uh, equip dot local slash SQL service for the user. 
at robot dc dot local dot equal dot local dot local dash k dash no pass and we see that it's failed now what we're going to want to do is grab that tgt from the sql service user account uh, using its ntlm hash so we can do that using get tgt from in packet so we put in the domain name slash the name of the user account so sql service in this case and then the hash at the end and now it finished save and ticket so now if you do an ls we just see it in there and it's there let's go ahead and export it so print working directory let's do export krb5 uh, cc name equals slash opt slash demo one slash sql service dot c cache hit enter now let's attempt to connect using ps exec again hit enter and we are connected so if we do who am i see i am nt authority system we do ip config slash all you should see that we are connected to the domain controller again what we did was use that user's ntlm hash to request kerberos tickets to request the tgt so that we can use that tgt as that specific user to access services machines so on and so forth well that's about it for this video i hope this helped broaden your knowledge a bit more on what can be done using ntlm hashes uh, other than just doing pass the hash and trying to crack them uh, for educational purposes only of course and uh, if you like this video hit that thumbs up subscribe for more content and i'll uh, catch you in the next one see ya